city of New Orleans 911. What's the address of the emergency? I need an ambulance in the emergency. Real, real bad, family. I'm on the interstate. We slammed into the railing. So y'all had an accident? We slammed into the side, and I can't, I can't see, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Stay with me, okay? It's no choice. Ma'am, I just sent a ticket to your phone so you can give me your location. Once you click that, I'll be able to see exactly where you guys are. My phone is so bloody, ma'am. Oh, Jesus. We need help, ma'am. Help is on the way, ma'am, okay? They're on their way. All right, I beg you. So we're going to a wreck on the interstate. Hopefully, no one's injured. Stop. Wrecks up here can be for bad, man. Dude, when it's raining. And it's raining, too. I hope it ain't too bad. I guess it's going to be on that side, because well, this is easy. It might be on that yeah. little loop right there. Oh, yeah, you can see it. I don't know how we gonna get to that, pal. You can show us an area, we see it. It's on the little flyover. Just give us a little delay. We're trying to figure out the best way to access it. Yeah, well, just be advised. You think her head went through the windshield. Oh, whoa. Her head went through the windshield? You gonna back up the ramp or let me get up and back it? Me and Joe, we responded to a call for an SUV that just hit a guardrail. And they're telling me that the patient head went through this windshield. I'm thinking, does this lady have some type of head fracture? So Joe and I need to snap to it. We're going to have to walk up the on ramp. Hey. Did, all right, what are they wearing seatbelts? Say, fam, you wearing seatbelt? What's up? What's up? Seat Oh, okay. oh, look. Right. Oh. All right. 50 contact, charm activation. We got you, baby. We got you, love. Thank you. Are you able to stand up? Oh, yeah. Any neck or back pain? Let that stretch her down. I see that, brother. We got her, okay? Did you get knocked out? Look, Everybody baby, else look, okay? Look. We got to put this on your neck, Let's love. take this jacket off. Give me this phone. Yeah. Take the jacket off. We got you, sweetheart. Here. We got you. We got you, love. It's going to be all right. Let's, dro let's just drop this jacket. You got to lower your head. Hold, hold it up. All right, let's get her on the stretcher. Come on, love. Come on, baby. We got you. You just stand there, and I'm going to turn the stretcher towards you. We got you, baby. The patient's talking to me, so that's a good sign. But she has a major laceration to her, her forehead. There's a lot of blood. And so it's really hard to tell what kind of injuries she really has at this point. All right, my name's Joe, and that's Titus, OK? And we're going to take good care of you. What was your name again? Danielle. I can remember that, because that's my sister's name. I know you're scared, but everything's going to be all right, all right? We got you. All right, Joe, how you been, dog? I'm gonna go do it. Yeah. You having any trouble breathing? No. Yeah, we do. Here you go. All right, baby. Legs and arms. You said, did you pass out at all? No? Nice deep breath. I got you, I got you. All right, cool. Let's get it. If you abandon that, I'm gonna start an IV. Here's your uh, acrylics. Let me you see this on. Hey, hand me a head, uh, head block. I got you, baby. Hey, Danielle, just keep talking to me, all right? Keep talking, D. We about to go to the hospital. You got it? Come on. All right, big stick. Good job, good job, D. You're doing good, baby. Now, keep talking. How old is your kid, baby? Four years old, I got a little five-year-old too, love. We want to keep her talking because we want to monitor her alert status. And this lady wants to live. You can see it in her face, the way she's talking and the way she's calm. She's telling us everything that we need to know. And the more information that we have, the better chance we could do to save her life. How? Nah, we good, she be good. Thank y'all, fellas. Trauma activation. It takes a lot of force to go through a windshield, so I'm really concerned about what's going on inside of her skull. I'm thinking I need to get this lady to the trauma center as quickly as I can, because at this point, she needed a CAT scan like yesterday. I'm trying to start, get an IV on you before we get there, all right? You left your veins at home, huh? It's hard to get. Yeah, you are hard to get. If you'd have knew all this was going to happen, you'd have brought them with you, huh? <laughs> I got you laughing. That's what I want. 
You can laugh before me, okay? You're gonna be all right. Dude. That lady here was leaking, though. Man. Dude, I've been doing this 14 years. That's a lot of blood. I ain't seen that blood in a long time, bro. Shirt was saturated, man. She's lucky to be alive, man. Her head went completely through that windshield, man. Completely through. You know how when completely. you first pull up, you supposed to look for the spider web? Yeah, the, it was no spider web. web. It was like a, a straight hole. That's crazy. That lack went all the way across her forehead. Driving her to the hospital, bro, I heard her laughing. At what she was telling her? Man, I told her she left her veins at home, man, because <laughs> she had none, none. I made her laugh, though, man. That made me feel good. That moment. So you're telling to, me, to man, the lady head split open. You told her corny ass joke, but at least she made her laugh. You know what? Bro. Corny or not, it served its purpose. A lot of times you get these people with uh, head injuries, and they're like, I just want to go to sleep. I'm so tired. No, I I'm going to keep, keep you talking to me. My goal for that patient was to make her laugh. She laughed. Mission accomplished. I think I she's going to be all right. I think it's more of a superficial laceration. It's all going to depend on what the CT shows. You know what? You did your thing, man. For her to still be living, that's saying. a good job, baby boy. Do what I do. You man. ready for the next one? I'm ready for the next one. You ready? Let's get it in. put this monitor up, and we're going to go. All right, for sure. What kind of pain are you in? I just got a call to say she was a female. Okay. He bit me in my face and my eye popped out. My eyes out my pocket. It's out the socket. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just go over there and push it back in. I'm freaking out. Okay. I, I can understand, but calm down, okay? I'm trying, but I'm hurt. I know. I know. I know. I know. We're in right to, um... Uh... A female that has had her eye bitten out by another person. This would be a first for me. 49, you copy? Yeah, the eyeball's out of the socket and dangling. Is it? Is that correct? Two more. All right. We get shootings and stabbings from this particular area quite often, so it's not unusual to get a traumatic call. But I've never had anybody that had an eye bitten out. How you doing? We got a toaster spit in my eye. This is what happened to my eye. She ran off. What the f? Can you see out that eye still? Man? All right, we got patient contact. We got to get her on the stretcher, baby. Get that stretcher in here. Don't worry about that right now. How'd that happen, baby? She got bit. Can you see? I can't see out of her. Uh, okay. What's your name? Precious. Precious, I'm Alex, okay? Alex, you remember how my fiance put some seatbelts on you. Where's the per... The per... That's, he didn't do it, huh? All right. There's somebody at the store. We got called out for a woman that had her eye bitten out. The entire eyeball was out and just kind of sitting outside of the eye socket. But how long ago this happened? All right. You're not hurt anywhere else, huh, baby? Yeah. All right. Can you see out your left eye? All right. I can move the eye. Okay, don't do don't that. Do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, 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 you don't, don't yeah, wrap no, it. I'm not. I'm just gonna. Just leave, leave it. it. Just sit it on there. This is Sergeant Charles. Talk to me. Uh, Talk to the no. store. Uh huh. And I swear, I think, it was, I think it was a prostitute. And her pimp was at the store. He said something to me, but that's not my thing. Right. So I guess she felt he was trying to get me. I was trying to talk to him. We got into an altercation. She put her hands on me, I swung back, and when I swung back, Big she stick. hit me in the face. Don't move, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's it, that's it. She didn't hit you with anything? No, sir. She left when my eye came out, and I ran home to my husband. All right, let's go. I, I don't know anything about how to do it. We got to go, Sarge. Yeah, I got you. All right, guys, let's go. I don't think that it was bitten out. From the way it looked, uh, whoever did it had some long and sharp fingernails and literally just gouged her eye out. The pupil and everything was deformed, so more than likely she's gonna lose that eye. And uh, she was pretty calm, so I don't know if I'd have been that calm. <laughs> Man in the river. Man in the river? Yeah. 
603 Bartholomew is gonna be on the river. Somebody's in no, the river. Yeah. Hopefully they can swim. Oh and it says patient is holding on to a log to stay afloat. The Mississippi River is very dangerous, even just off of the banks, just because the current moves so fast. Once you get caught in that current, it can sweep you miles down the river. Is he in or he's out? He's he's just down there holding on. When I first see him, I'm like, oh. Hold on, we're coming. How the hell did he get down there? He fell over. He just fell over, huh? From what we hear, he's been in the water for at least an hour. He was shivering, he was cold. The priority is to get him out the river and do it very quickly. But right now, I'm gonna throw your rope down just in case, you know, you get loose. Just hold on to this rope, OK? Please, I'm running straight. Going in the river, the fear is not coming out of the river. That turbulence in the water will kind of suck you under, and it's hard to recover from it. It can be fatal. We're working something out for you, man. I feel you, man. His life is in grave danger. If he goes under, we'll never see that cat again. He said he just fell, like fell off the edge of the bulkhead, yeah. The man to rescue. As soon as they get a boat over here, we're going to get you on that boat and get you to safety. Don't let go of the pole. We're going to bring it to you. I just hold on to that right now. Keep it simple. Throw down the life preserver just to get him some type of floating device. Just don't let go of that ring. If you let go of that pile and just hold on to that ring, we won't let you float off, all right? Just stay right where you at. Oh. Hey, buddy, you got a life jacket coming to you, OK? It's kind of quick. They were able to scramble the harbor patrol boat. They're stationed like uptown area. Come on. The man to file long purses out of the water. To get the patient out, it was a beautiful thing. All three services are there for one common goal. Look, he just waving, he chilling. Once we get him out of the water, it's kind of getting him warmed up. He had a really low body temperature. Being in the water for about an hour, did that to him. Besides being cold, do you have any pain anywhere? Are you, is the shoulder, your back, and that's shaking? I can't. It's just a hypothermia. Yeah, he's just cold. That water, man, drops your body temperature really, really fast. Is that it? Yes, sir. That is it. So you were sitting on the ledge? Did you slip? Did you, like, look over no, the edge? How did it happen? Were, me and my friend said, go to the river. He's a local. OK. Right. Yeah, he's like, we need to check this out. He jumped with that money and I responded to it. And I just, you know, my left foot. Went. And it slipped. All right, well. OK. That's I got it. Just, right. just a mistake. All right, go ahead. thing I know, I'm eating the water. Okay. He was standing on the edge, on the edge of the water. His friend was climbing around, said a joke, he started laughing, and he, he slipped in. That must have been a hell of a joke. <laughs> you know what? I asked him what the joke was, and he said he can't even remember it. So I'm like, dude, you was about to die for this joke, man. He said, at least remember the punchline. Going down the car collision in the intersection, they saying. Not sure exactly what's going on out there. We're gonna back up the ambulance on this call. 6240's on scene. Hello guys. Hello guys, what's going on? Got two patients here. Okay. Uh, you were driving, babe? Yeah. Okay. You didn't lose consciousness, huh? You've been awake all the while? Yeah. Any trouble breathing? Oh. Where you got pain at? Oh. Where it's at, right here? Right there. Might have a clavicle fracture up here. Collarbone might have been fractured. She was also complaining of a lot of pain in her ear. Her airbag had deployed. Those things go off, they're pretty loud. And she knew person, place, time, and thing. Oh. Could have significant hidden injuries when you have a motor vehicle collision. So we were taking every precaution. Let me take a look in your ear right there, see what's going on in your ear. It's like hell. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna put you in a little sling now, okay? Oh, oh my goodness. 
We started our patient care, and all of a sudden, a male stepped in the side door of the ambulance and identified himself as her son. Yeah, yep. You ain't supposed to be going nowhere, man. You ain't supposed to be going nowhere. It's okay. It's all right. What you want to be going All right, hey, let's look. Try not to get our blood pressure up, okay? You don't tell me nothing about my mother, man. Get out. Get out there. EPD, EPD. All of a sudden, this guy, the patient's son, just lost it. Step out of the way. Step out of the way. Fire, need your help. EPD, EPD. Get out of the truck. Get out of the truck. Get off of him. Someone hit their emergency button. Immediate response is fear. Are my coworkers okay? Is my family okay? Because if somebody hits that button, all hell is breaking loose. We responded to a motor vehicle collision with two elderly ladies. We were treating them and everything was going good when all of a sudden her son entered the truck, was yelling at her and cussing her and her pushing match started and the next thing you know, we had our hands full. Me, All right, PD's here. Call four. All right, it's call four. They said, who was that? That was Bouvier. Officer, I'm the deputy chief for EMS, and I want that man booked for assault on the EMT. Man, he put his hand on me first. My mom and everybody. I asked you to step out of the unit. You failed to do so. Man, it. Once the gentleman had been escorted from the scene, we saw the patients we had to go take care of. You all right? Last we get back in the truck and I was feeling a lot of pain in my shoulder. And my left hand was numb at the time. All right. We were kind of tussling a little bit. He swings me around, and there's a parked truck there. And I hit the truck with my shoulder. And as soon as I hit it, I felt the pain. I knew it was immediate pain. 6240, I got an injured employee. I need another truck out here. 3232, show us on scene. We pull up on scene. Half the police are there, half the fire department fleet is there, and half the EMS fleet is there. We are all there. Where's the crew? What's right going here. on? The guy grabbed him and bounced him up against the car right here. Yeah, He's right? He's complaining all his shoulder and all right here. I'm just going to put this as a precaution. Right. Where's the guy? He's uh, secure. He's got him in custody. OK, good. All right. So we taking Ted? Yeah, you're going to take Ted. You ready, Ted? Yeah. Immediately, I don't even care about the details of what happened. We need to make sure that cool. our family member is okay. All right, Ted. Don't punch me. You got a little mark right there. His clavicle's still fine. He feels symmetrical. He just hurts like a son. May have just man. got a little nerve issue going on. You got um, any so tingling in your up? hand? A little bit. Okay. All right. His shoulder didn't appear to be dislocated. Doesn't mean it couldn't have been fractured. He was having a lot of pain. For him, it's going to be all about x-rays. You ready? Sure. Too late? Yep. All right, let's go. Is that Theodore? <laughs> it's wild. You know, when you go to something to help someone and you get attacked, I mean, we're the good guys. We're the guys that are supposed to be around to help everyone else, you know? So when we're taken out of the picture, that's a problem. Ted, he's a good employee. Tried to keep his cool. The guy just wanted to wanted to be uh, loud and fight. So, uh, you know, hopefully Ted will make out OK. And uh, I'm getting too old for this kind of stuff. <laughs> What's the address of the emergency? So a neighbor, he's bleeding pretty bad. Call the police. Someone happened, sir. Somebody broke into his house, I think. Somebody shot him, man. Somebody shot him. Hey, man, sit down, man. And calm down, sir, OK? Calm down. We're going to get somebody out to you. 3232, Alice and Forche. Someone a male shot there. We're around MDT. We're going to the 3300 block for a male that was shot there. All right. I'm glad the EMS has a 38 year old black male. He's unsure of where he shot at. There is blood present, but you can't tell where he shot. He's walking around. He said somebody was in his house. He woke up. He was shot. EMS, we copy that, right? Yeah. I mean, how do you say you just you woke up shot? 
It is a medical anomaly. What's up, man? I heard the gunshot and they got bullets all in the house. Okay, baby, can we get you in a truck so we can... Yeah, we can... Yeah, I take care of my son by myself. All right, I'll take care of everything. Let me okay. look at you real quick. I'm gonna have to cut this off of you, okay, honey? Initially, he appears to be fine. It doesn't even look like he's shot. He's got one in the chest. He's got one in the chest right here. All right, baby, let's go this way. I lift up his shirt, and I can see that he has a bullet wound to the chest. Sit right here for me, OK? Oh, Lord, I hope I don't die, man. You're not going to die. die. We'll take care of you. We, of course, immediately just get him in the back of the truck so we can see if he has anything more. It's right, right here. But where? That's where it starts. It's swollen right there. Did you fall? No, I was in the bed sleep. OK. <laughs> and you just woke up with this, huh? Yeah, I heard it. I don't know how they got in my house. Nick and I get a call for a male shot inside of his home. He has a bullet wound to the chest. So while assessing him, Nick feels the back of his head, and he can feel a little skull deformity. All right, baby, sit hey, back. Wait a minute. It looks like he's crying tears, literally. I can't figure out what until I look at it really close. Oh, my god. That's right That's there. It. What happened? I got shot in the face. Yeah, yeah, baby. He's actually got a hole in his eye socket from a bullet. You got it right here, and you got one right here in the crease of your eye. Looks like it went into your nasal cavity, and it may have actually ended up back here. Because Can you see out of this eye? Okay. Were you able to see out of this eye before? No. Because he happened to be blind in the eye that he was shot, he had no idea that he was actually hit in the face. So got your that blood in his mouth. Yeah. I mean, the chest wound alone, he was definitely going to be a trauma activation. But when you have someone shot to the face, he could have swelling of the brain, bleeding on the brain. I mean, the possibilities are endless. So we are going to get him to the hospital as quickly as possible. You just Boy, relax your arms, OK? OK, he's in the we front seat. Care, right? Just count your blessings. Try to relax. Don't touch back there, but all right. All right, little pinch. I know this is a stretch mark, so it might hurt a little bit. Oh, Nick, I need one of those lines over here. Look at it this way. They didn't get your son, and you're going to live. So you look at it like that, you're really lucky. I'm going to grab you a scope real quick, and I'm going to check out the little one. Thank you. Come here. Lift up your shirt. I just want to make sure you're OK. You don't have any pain anywhere? No, ma'am. Okay. All right, hop in. I mean, in my day, I've seen a lot of lucky people, but this guy probably ranks in the top five. Chest, OK. Face, come on. You don't normally get shot in the face and live to tell about it. Okay. Thank I you, man. I have my son, baby. I have your son, baby. He's in the front seat. Say hey to your dad. Yeah. He's in the front. 3232, code 3UH. The luckiest dude you're going to meet. Dude. Did it go straight through or did Entrance, it go? Entrance. And I couldn't tell. Obviously, you can't tell from an x-ray. You're going to need a, a cat. Right. But you can see the bullet. In like, the back. Yeah. So and one. you got the one in the chest. Right. Yeah. And it luckily, it didn't hit his heart. Right. Yeah. You know, so. Or a lung. The luckiest dude, period. Ooh. Once he comes out, we go into the boat. We go on gambling because that's what y'all do. Yeah, y'all decided hey, that. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna find him Dang. and I'm gonna put some, uh, put all some money on whatever he says, red or black, whatever right. he wants. <laughs> you so. are lucky, lucky dude. Yeah. You're under five feet. No, I'm not, Nicholas Manning. Just because you wear like little pumps on your shoes no, honey. and stuff. No, honey. Yeah, that's like Nothing. two or three inches. No. Yeah. Do you want me to hit you? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you trying to rip my weave off? You got a weave? No. It's an expression. It means that you're being real cutthroat right now. And I don't even like you anymore. Uh-huh. I don't believe you. You believe me when I ninja kick you right in the belly? You don't. You can't reach that high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. 32, 32, say my code 3 in the third. Lieutenant Orleans. 49, I'm in right from two lane. All right, we're going to an overturned vehicle. Oh, that is definitely overturned. Mm -hmm. Damn, everybody's out. Mm -hmm. This does not look good. 6249, I'm seeing. Who was in the car? She hit the fire. Where are you hurting at, baby? My arm. Just your arm? Can you feel your fingers? No. Could you please just give me one? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is that the only place you're hurting at? Yes. You're going to be all right. We're going to take care of you, all right? I promise. 
She got a broken arm or are they just wrapped? I don't know. We're gonna have to unwrap it because it looks like it's wrapped with a pillow. She was the only one in the vehicle? Yeah. So All right. Stop over there. Not not any it circulation it's I ran to the scene. She's not getting any circulation in it? Hey. Bystanders had actually wrapped her arm with everything I think people could grab out of their vehicles, and we're not sure what's under there. What's going on? Oh, you're going to the hospital, that's all. You're going to be all right. Let's relax. All right, we're going to take all that off, baby, and check that arm out real quick. Can you move your fingers for us? Wiggle your fingers. I can't even see her fingers yet, so. Are you hurting anywhere? My arm hurts. Okay, we're about to look at it right now. I know, baby. I'm sorry, but I got to get all this stuff off. I'm assuming off you got a other. laceration on your arm. That's why they wrapped it like that, so we got to figure out if it's bleeding still so we can stop it. That's all. It's no big deal. You remember what happened? I was driving, and I ran into the firehouse. Okay. You had your seatbelt on? Yes. Okay. Ooh. That would be university. That is not. Give me all a right. trauma pad. All right, so look, was your window down? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Okay. You got a pretty good wound right there where it looks like your arm actually came out of the car and drug on the ground, okay? She's gonna be a room four. Everything's fine. I can see just all of the adipose tissue, the muscle, the bone, everything. It is way more serious than I expected. That's and she has no ball. feeling in this arm. Do you feel her touching your arm at all? Yeah, I can feel it. Up here? All right, can you move your fingers? No. It's Nick, important. hold this up. Really try. Move your fingers for me. I can't. Okay. So you might have a little bit of tendon damage in your arm, okay? Can you feel this? Yeah, a little Ooh. Okay. scratch right here. All right, I'll hold it. You're going to feel a big sticker over here, buddy. You also have a broken arm to the bottom left of it. That's why it hurts so bad. It's obvious that she has several injuries, which that leads me to believe that she probably has internal injuries as well. She's a trauma code. She needs to get to the hospital as quickly as possible. 3232, code 3UH, room 4. It's all good, boo. You're going to be just fine. All right, we out. Oh, that injury was How about nice that though. arm? Mm. <laughs> She's, She's lucky, lucky it didn't roll over one more time. Her arm was not amputated. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. For real. I mean, she was missing chunks. Yeah. So I'd have been pissed because my tattoo would have been ruined. Ooh. You know how mad I would have been? I'd be like, oh, hell no. Hell no. I'd have been no. like, you better go find that skin. Right, exactly. You better go get it. That's exactly what I was about to say. I was like, hey, we ain't leaving until you find my hunk of skin so I can sew it back on. <laughs> and that hunk of meat <laughs> right. that I missed, you better go find that too. Right. I'd have been pissed. That's for sure. 4341, 4341. You have a 30-year-old male, nose is hanging off his face, assaulted. 6240, I'm in Morale. 3251. 30 year old male, conscious breathing, was physically assaulted. Complainant states that his nose is hanging off of his face. Ooh. He says he doesn't know what happened. How hard does somebody have to hit you? And with what kind of an object do they have to hit you with to make your nose no, 30, hang off your face? 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, What? 6249 on the scene. I went by the store. Hey, man. Hold on, man. Let's get you in the truck, OK? Oh, yep. You can call, uh, we'll activate it, I guess. Come on, man. I mean, it looks what like a, Do we know what it's from? It said it's like from a stick, but it looks like a clean cut. It's more than a clean cut. I mean, well, I'm trying to call it's like a clean, you know, Ooh. but that is. It's a look at. All right, have a seat here, my dude. What's that from, my man? It's from a stick. Somebody crabbed me across the stick at the city right there. Yeah, let's ask the people. Can we get your arms out of here, my man? All right, what's up, bro? You can call me Jordan. Yeah. All right, Jordan. Jordan? Fred. All you, right, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Jordan, Jordan can you lean up a little bit so I can take this off? Perfect. Pull it up some more. We're going to activate. Go it always heightens the stress level whenever you get on scene and somebody meets trauma criteria. Because, all right, now I got 10 minutes. Now I got to start thinking about, OK, we have to give vital signs, hopefully get an IV, and get him to the trauma center. All right. Did you get knocked out or anything? No, I, I just kept on walking. I, I just shot by the whole, the whole deal, man. All right, so put your arm down. Yes, ma'am. You a gangster. You just kept on walking. Somebody stopped you or you stopped the police? I ain't stopped nobody. 
So who stopped you, the police? I don't even know how, I don't even know how y'all showed up. But somebody, somebody called, called. said they got somebody a Somebody called, y'all showed up. Yeah. We need no some stitches, man. It's all right, baby. <laughs> he said it's all right. I ain't worried about it. All right. All right. Free lady like y'all. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> You know, somebody has this grossly deformed injury to the face, and they're just like, oh, no, I'm, I'm just going to home and go to sleep. <laughs> sir, no, sir, you're not. <laughs> We're going to take you to the hospital. I'm going to kind of push it up, all right? Do what you got to do. Let me see some tape. We're going to get you taken care of. Do you want to get anything? for probably about a minute or two, and then it stops. That's why I ain't really go to try to go to the hospital and call y'all, because it stopped bleeding. If you would have rubbed your nose the wrong way, you, you would have lost that whole that thing off. Thing off. Uh, like, if you would have fell asleep and just whoop, that yeah, would have been over. Right. You would have had a half a nose. All, all right. right. We're going to put this little piece of tape and then we out of yeah, here, all right? Go ahead. All right. You can relax that on my man. We're going to take him. He's going to university. I'm shook. I'm trying to get you across for Shuck. His f nose is hanging off. For real. Rescue board. DVD is reporting man down on I-275 South. All right, home slice. I-4 westbound to I-275 southbound. Traumatic injury. It's right in that bend, isn't it? We're going with wreck. Have you heard that wreck of uh, the motorcycle? Which one right there? We're getting all of them done. This portion of the interstate is known as Malfunction Junction. We get a lot of accidents in this general vicinity. We never really know what we're going to run into. Rescue four. Oh, oh my God, I can't move. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Uh, 30 feet from up there, he jumped. He jumped down? Yes. Landed the uh, side of his face on the ground. So we're trauma alert? Yeah, unknown injuries, just completely can't breathe. He's got a lack on this side of the face. <laughs> Rescue four. One, two, three. All right. Our biggest concern from a 30-foot fall is we want to make sure that he doesn't have a brain bleed, and we want to make sure he's not bleeding to death internally. Ouch. That hurt? Ouch. Yeah, it hurts. Stop. They're starting IVs on you. What's hurting? I can't breathe. So your chest is hurting, or you just can't breathe? Uh, Left side is diminished. Doug listens to the lung sounds. We can't hear anything on the left side. I can't breathe. We're worried that his lung is now collapsed. In the cab now. We're out. Let's go. A collapsed lung is a very dangerous situation. You hurt really bad? It doesn't allow you to breathe readily and adds so much pressure in your chest that it doesn't allow your heart to beat. Assess those lung sounds one more time, please. Dying. You got clues right here. Is he tight? Oh yeah, I can't breathe. The patient can't get enough oxygen. We have no choice but to do a needle decompression to his chest. And we want to allow his lungs to reinflate and give him a chance to get a good breath of air before his body starts to shut down. How you doing, big guy? Huh? Here in the air. Assess those lung sounds. Ah. Once, 164 ah. over 81. Look, I think we did get a pressure relief because the sats went up. Now we have lung sounds. We look at the monitor. His vital signs are much improved. Sir, are you still with us? Yeah, he's with you. Rescue four, arrival hospital. You're doing great. You're getting better.
Hooked him. That went through the glass. What so, were they doing? I don't know. I just said went through glass, but arterial bleed might be a trauma alert. Trauma alert or two. Rescue 13 on scene. Rescue 13 on scene. Did it for moral artery? No, it's it's to the hamstring. OK, good. Uh, but initially, the cops said it was a word. Probably going to need to go on the stretcher the way she is, just like that. That's fine. Oh, I'm going to take a better look when we get there, because it looks like it goes all the way through. What, sweetie? Honey, we're going to wrap you. I'm going to take it, Carrie. you. How you feeling? Good, good. As soon as we see a patient like that and that much blood, we need to get her to the hospital as quick as possible. Hey, this left arm, pretty bad. Ooh. I want to get her moving on her left arm. Very serious lacerations that go down to the bone. The most serious laceration is on her hamstring, and it is probably over a foot long. So where's the door she fell through? All right, this is what we're going to do, honey. I'm going to turn you on your side, your left side. We know that she's cut. We can see that the cut is deep. But what's cut on the inside, how badly is it cut? We're going to get you out of here, honey. Don't worry. If the patient makes one wrong move, or if we manipulate her leg in one wrong way, she could bleed to death. All right, just hang tight, sweetheart, OK? I'm going to take a look at these arms. But I'm going to patch your arm up, too, because right. I want to get this other one clean. That's part of her tendon right there. That's not good. Oh, Can you move your fingers? Perfect. OK, that's good. Let's get going. Yeah! All right, honey, I'm going to be messing around down here, OK? But I'm going to keep you covered. I want to make sure we're not bleeding too bad. Just don't tell me that. Oh, yeah, you got a good one there. Relig and I are treating a patient with severe lacerations, the worst of which are on the back of her right hamstring. Right. Yeah. I think she's cut worse here, but I think it's keeping it together because she's pinching her leg. Uh -huh. The way that she's sitting and the way her body is formed is actually keeping the bleeding together. Honey, I know it's none of my business, but can you give me the story just so I can tell them at the emergency room? I, he was playing around on the porch. What kind of medical history do you have? Just, um, anxiety. You have anxiety? <laughs> you are tough as nails. Right. Marty girl, my boat right into a wreck. Right up in there. Safe to say, I do not remember being this tired in a long time. But I mean, we literally just worked two 16 hour days in a row. Yeah. We arrived on scene to a car crash between an SUV and a taxi cab. They actually hit so hard that the door was ripped off one of the vehicles and was stuck to the other. Hello. When that happens, you definitely kind of perk up because there could be some serious injury involved. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> All right. Broken what? <laughs> oh, OK. We see a female laying across the back seat with an obviously broken leg. How are we doing this? Let's put a board in here, slide her out. It's a tip fit, right? Yeah. Open or closed? It looks closed. Everybody else is OK? Yeah. yeah, there's a little kid with a little bump on his eye, but he's fine. Cool. I think we need to slide her actually out. That way, we can kind of support her leg as much as possible. When you have a long bone fracture, you want to make sure that you immobilize that bone from moving around, especially when you're moving the patient around, because bad things can happen. You have a lot of blood vessels that run up and down your legs, and it can possibly cause you an injury that make things worse. All right, this is really going to suck. I'm going to go ahead and warn you, but I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible, OK? If you need to squeeze me, scream, whatever you need to do, do not be ashamed, OK? All right, I'm going to grab you under your arms, and I'm going to pull you onto this board. That's it. That's the worst of it. Straighten it out. I'm going to just move your torso. Uncross your arms for just a second. Nick, this is you down there. 
That's gonna support your leg, okay? It's almost over. All right, that's it. Just relax, okay? We're gonna get you in the truck. We're gonna give you some medicine. I'm gonna go set that up. All right. Nick, you want morphine? Yeah. These are the last few bumps, okay? Darlin is getting you in. You all right, Lou? And this lady was in so much pain that she's actually physically shaking from the shock factor. And it kind of pulls at your heartstrings. So you want to make it as comfortable as possible for them. Luckily for us, we have medicine that we can give to kind of knock the edge off. My kid, Everybody's fine. Everybody's good. And you're going to be fine. You're just going to have to have a little surgery on your leg. Kind of put everything back together, but you're going to be OK. So this is going to be morphine. Straighten this arm out for me. Went ahead and gave five to All start. Right. Cool. So she got five uh, morphine in. Beautiful. What would you get your leg caught on? Do you remember? Was it the center console? I don't know. I might have had my legs full. OK. My husband's an ER doctor. OK. Where at? OK. Y'all here visiting? Yeah, we're here. OK. You good? Yeah, we're good. Thank you. 3232, show us how much a Toro, one patient, one ten twelve. My four-year-old was right in front of me in the booster. Well, he was completely fine. So everybody was fine. I decided you'd be unfortunate enough to get your leg broken, but it's OK. Exercise classes. Oh. Well, you might not be doing that too much, but I guarantee you you'll be back on the feet quickly. This is nice and easy. It's a clean break, so it should be really easy to repair. The 35-year-old female, she's got a tip rib fracture. It's closed. She's got an IV with some morphine on board. She's fully immobilized. We'll see you in a couple minutes. It really sucks, though. Think about it. I mean, people are just coming out of here, have a good time, trying to pay attention to the parades, and next thing you know, you got a leg fracture that's pretty much going to keep you out of. Oh man, she caught a bad break. <laughs> Honey. There you go. The way she <laughs> we get a call for a bicyclist truck. Ooh. Ooh. I can honestly say this is probably one of the worst leg injuries I've seen in my career. She's missing half the back of her leg. Hey, sweetie, we're going to take care of you, OK? All right, baby, don't move, OK? You remember everything that happened? Uh-uh. No? What's your name? Stacy. Stacy? Nick recognized that she needed to be kind of soothed at that point, which gives me the room to get this extremity splinted. All right, oh. Stacy, we're going to take care of it. She's waving around this injured leg in ways that she could cause further damage. Why don't you come here? Yeah. You want to grab that? Ah! Listen, listen, listen. Your leg's broken, OK? We got to straighten it out to make sure you don't lose it, OK? okay. So you got to be tough and strong for me right now, That's all right? That's it, baby. The worst part's over. Just relax. We're going to put it in. Listen, put your arms on your chest. I got to put you on this board, all right? Oh, my god. Okay. Ah, please, please give me something. Baby, I can't give you anything right now. Oh, my god, please. I don't want to see anyone in pain, but I need to get her in the back of the truck. I need to know what her vital signs are because there are parameters that I need them to be within so that I can give her this pain medicine. Oh, my God, please give me something. Please. All right, look, now, uh, does any of this hurt? Yes. All right, your leg or your back? Oh, both. Can you wiggle your toes and your left foot? Oh, no, I can't move it at all. All right. Ah! I need to take your blood pressure, okay? So we can give you some pain medicine. Okay. All right, that's my girl. If she was hit hard enough to cause this much damage to her leg, I want to know what other kind of injury she has. Can you feel that? No. No, you can't feel that at all? No. Okay. No. Relax that arm right there, okay? Oh, my God. Does your belly hurt at all? Uh-huh. It hurts up here when I push it? Uh, yeah. She is very tender when I push on it, and that makes me suspect internal bleeding. So she's got really bad upper quadrant pain. 32, 32, show us around to your age. New Orleans EMS University Med Control, 38, 38-year-old female patient, pedestrian, struck by a vehicle. Uh, left lower extremity is completely mangled, obvious fracture. She's got huge uh, avulsion with exposed muscle tissue, bone. Maybe five minutes. Copy that. Main thing I'm worried about at this time is making sure that we get her to the hospital before the damage to her leg is irreparable, or before that internal bleeding has gone too far. All right, baby, I'm about to give you some pain medicine now, OK? okay. Take some slow, deep breaths. You're doing good. 
this is the type of patient whose injuries could potentially be fatal to her. Uh, uh, you OK? Uh-uh. Trouble breathing? Yeah. We're almost to the hospital, OK? We'll be there in about. Your ball. In your chest? Your OK. Chest. All right. Okay, baby, nobody's pressing on it. We're at the hospital, okay? 32, 32 at the hospital. And we're about to take you out now, all right? Okay. She has a long road ahead of her, but we can hope for the best. You know, she's in the best hands possible. She's at our trauma center. Got a pulse back in that old foot. Really? Yeah. Good. So she's going to get some blood, go up to surgery, and hope. to a motor vehicle accident that's out on Highway 11 Bridge. We got fire in both aspects. 10 4 copy that. Vehicles on fire and people trapped. Fire car has me there now. Doesn't sound good. We've had some really bad accidents on that bridge. It's just a little two-lane bridge, and it's very dark. Uh, on scene. Wow. There's a three year old in the car, also was in her seat, got a busted nose. Mom's probably got a broken arm. There's nobody in the other vehicle. This is the option of the other vehicle. Oh, okay. So we have four total. Yeah. All right. We get a call for MVA. There are two vehicles, one that is still smoking, and another that has two children in it, along with the driver. The driver of the car that caught on fire, she was very lucky. Apparently, a passerby stopped and opened a door and helped her out of the vehicle before it got fully engulfed in flames. We got her out. I had to move her. Like I said, I wouldn't sure any kind of spinal issue. All right, let's get a, I got the, this, I think this one has uh, the seat, the car seat in it. The baby is maybe four or five months old. She's a newborn almost. I see some brush burns on her, like a little abrasions to the head. She starts crying, so that's always a good sign. Oh, my goodness. Because that means that they're feeling any pain that they might have, and that they're scared and know what's going on. If you have a baby that's quiet, that has just been through uh, something as traumatic as this, that's always a, a cause of concern. That one's OK? I get the baby girl all set, and firemen bring her older sister in. Okay, what hurts on you? That hurt? All right. All right. You want me to get you a little something that's cold and put some coal on it? All right. I start to talk to her and, and assess her. I see she's got some swelling to her lips and nose area. You want to hold that? You want me to hold it? All right, I'm going to sit right here and hold it for you. Can you wiggle your feet? Oh, very good. I like those tennis shoes. Uh, the firemen were taking care of the mom. Apparently, she had a, um, what appeared to be a broken arm or a broken elbow. Um, your mama, we're going to get your mama in in just a minute, OK? The baby, look, I got your baby. She's doing good, too. She keeps asking about the baby. I thought she was asking about her sister. I kept telling her, baby's right here. She's fine. She's fine. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get your doll for you. Come to find out, she was talking about her baby doll. Christine's gonna go get your doll, okay? She's got that little mark on her head. That would meet trauma criteria. The mom is in a lot worse shape than the children, so we need to get her to the doctor. Are you all right with them going to Ashna, or you want them at university? The two children, they were very lucky that they were properly secured in car seats, and that's the only thing that saved their lives. If that hadn't have been in play, I'm almost pretty sure there would have been at least one fatality, if not two. Huh? <laughs> I keep thinking I'm having hot flashes. <laughs> we got a male subject fell. This 
Rescue just got on scene and they're telling him they need the cutters, so he's definitely impaled on the fence. You gotta move a little bit. Thank you. You never wanna pull anything out of anybody because you can cause more damage and they could bleed out instantly. All right, 49, I'm on scene. Uh, uh, Come back. Uh, this metal. Uh, Support it. It's, it's right, it's right. I've never seen anybody stuck on the part of the fence that's like in the middle. Uh, so usually it's the very top. Uh, can you still wiggle those fingers for me? It was in a very dangerous spot how it went in. It didn't just go through his hand, it actually went through his wrist up into his hand, probably a good three to five inches. Uh. I didn't know if they advised you, but the cut started. We want to gently and quickly cut the fence and get him and the section of fence to the trauma center without doing any further damage as far as nerves and or maybe even um, nicking an artery. Oh. LSU, okay. the trauma center. Oh. Oh. I don't know how he did it. I think he did more than just fall. I don't, I don't, he said he was just walking. And I guess he, I mean, he could have been walking and tripped. Team man, you got it? All right, you hold on to it. This is not the first time we've done this. It won't be the last time that we've done this. People get impaled on these fences in this city all the time. Because the majority of them are under the influence. They forget their keys. They want to hop and go see an ex-girlfriend. All right, let's get them in. So they try to hop over these fences, and a lot of the old fences are those wrought iron fences with points. He's lucky it was just his hand. I've seen them where they were impaled through their femurs. I mean, you have two or three people trying to hold that person up because they can't hold themselves up. So it's not an uncommon call. What happened? <laughs> yeah, it'll, get, it'll be all right, though. Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Randomizer, randomizer. No, they're not dead. I can work with that.